Concrete Heads, Owen Blevins, ConcreteAnswers.tv, bringing you the Internet's most passionate show about concrete plants and equipment. Today we're going to finish up our two-part series on the Bibco Concrete Reclaimer. Jay Robinson, aka Big Daddy, is going to finish up his talk on the Reclaimer. This time he's going to go to the backside. We're going to watch the water, see where it goes, see how it's processed, and gets put back into the batch. That's right, back into the batch. Great way to get rid of that water that all of us are having difficulty with and the suspended solids. So check it out. One thing that's unique about the Bibco is that the amount of concrete being fed into the, ma the machine is controlled by the size of the opening. There is no motor to stall or any of that issue. It is controlled strictly by the opening size of the opening going in. One of the unique things about the Bibco is that the machine sits at grade, the hopper is located at the appropriate position, so there are no ramps required. Here's an example where the truck is washing out at the Bibco, but at the same time, he's washing off his barrel and his loading hopper. That water, again, is captured in the boat ramp where it can be pumped over and reused. This water is pumped over into the clear water pit because most of your solids settle on the bottom where they're easily mucked out with the boat ramp and then can be processed back through the Bibco. A unique thing about the Bibco auger is that it is in a urethane blanket. It is not a steel flighting in a steel chamber. Therefore, we can maintain much tighter tolerances and remove more sand fines, aggregate fines, from the washed out concrete. There's a jack shaft that the screw is mounted on and a bearing mounted within the shaft itself of the auger so that the bearing is in all cases above any moist or wet solution that is in the machine. Take a look at this material that's discharged by the Bibco. One of the things that I think is key is the fact that there's not a trace of cement fines. This material is clean as a whistle. Another thing is how dry it is. This just was discharged and as you can see this material has been very effectively dewatered. Let's walk around to the uh, back of the machine. The Bibco is a true closed loop system. The gray water runs into the pit. This is separated by a wall from the clear water, maintained in suspension, and then used back in the batch. There is no slime or muck to muck out. The agitator gearbox is mounted on a urethane pad. You can see it in here. On the upside are urethane washers maintained by a steel washer. This allows for a certain amount of flexibility, which you possibly can see. It's a very small amount of movement, but it eases the wear and tear on the bearings, giving you longer life of the gearbox bearings. Over in this part of the gray water pit, there's two probes, as you can see. One is a densiometer. This reads the specific gravity of the uh, water in the gray water pit, and the other is a level control. We need to maintain both the uh, specific level and the uh, specific gravity of the pit. And this can be diluted with the clear water as necessary. The specific gravity, of course, as I said, is read by the densiometer. It is read and displayed inside on a digital readout. In most cases, it's interfaced with the batch computer. Most batch computers today know what the specific gravity is, what the specific gravity of the batch water is required, and therefore knows how to compute the amount of gray water to the amount of potable water. The pump you see here, which is down in the pit, is dedicated to the water going back to the plant for the reuse of gray water in the mix. It is designed so that when you have your target amount of gray water in the mix, everything in the pipe drains back into the pit. The pipe is always left empty, so no residual water with fines will lay in the pipe, causing buildup. This system has an optional heat exchange system. We're looking at it here. This is, consists of heat exchange plates in the floor of the concrete pit, the gray water pit only, a manifold with feed and return lines so that water can be circulated through each of the, in this case, three chambers of the heat exchange plates. The water is provided by the Infernotherm or is supplied from the Infernotherm, which is a insulated tank that's very efficient for maintaining chilled water in the summer, the chilled water provided by a chiller that circulates the cold water through the uh, 
chiller into the tank and then from the tank through the heat exchange plates here. Likewise in the winter we have the Infernotherm providing the hot water which is also provided for batch and the water is circulated through the heat exchange plates. These do not come into contact with the gray water other than through the heat exchange plates. Another feature with the Bibco is that we have a separate heating chamber. So the machine itself can be run 12 months a year, 365 days a year. When it gets cold, it's an automatic, thermostatically controlled heat chamber that blows hot air into the system. Greetheads, what do you think? Cisco Niebert, two thumbs up. Big Daddy did a great job for us on that walk around. Now you get how it's called a 100% closed loop recycling system. Takes care of it all for you, soup to nuts. Have any questions? Check it out at bibco.com, bibco.us. Of course, maconcrete.com, and as always, concreteanswers.tv. We're here for you. See ya.